everybody and welcome back to another episode of Sexy Sunday where we talk all things sex and self-love and today we are going to be talking about non-monogamy, polyamory, open relationships and my limited experience with them. In this episode and in the series I will be talking about adult content and in detail so so just please be aware of who you are watching this around and also because of the nature of Sexy Sunday these videos will most likely be demonetized so please make sure to support me in any ways that you can by hitting the like button, subscribing if you haven't already, and watching till the end because we're gonna have fun, okay? I think I forgot all the rest of my disclaimers but that that's good for now. Also I won't also like normal on Sexy Sunday I will have everything listed down below it's gonna be a mess today because I really want to do a green look, but I don't really have good green eyeshadow So I'm gonna be so I have like a couple palettes here I'm just gonna kind of throw together a green eyeshadow look. I don't know. We'll we'll make it work but Anyways, let's start talking about polyamory open relationships being non-monogamous So the reason why I wanted to talk about this is as a lot of y'all know Mason and I have opened up our relationship and this has been my first experience being not monogamous I used to I was a serial monogamous I'm talking like long monogamous relationship after long monogamous relationship and it's kind of funny because when I met Mason, I we met on Tinder and I was trying to talk to women. I was trying to go on Tinder and just like casually talk to women. And of course I ended up getting into a relationship with a man. But non-monogamy and polyamory were things that Mason had more experience with and he really opened my eyes to. I was a person that like if you would have told me five years ago that like I would be a part of an open relationship I would have literally laughed in your face like I just would not have believed you whatsoever I used to be such a jealous person and such a possessive person that like I just I wouldn't it wouldn't have happened it wouldn't have been a thing for me but with time with learning about kind of you know what open relationships are like and with actually practicing it, you know, like actually doing it, um, I have learned so much and I'm so, so happy that I get to do this. I'm so happy in my relationship and it's not monogamous. I would have never thought that would happen for me. So let's just talk about some different like definitions, right? Because it feels like each term is kind of an umbrella term, like ethical non-monogamy, is an umbrella term. Open relationships can kind of be an umbrella term. Polyamory can be an umbrella term. It really all comes down to how you and your partner or partners define it. So for a while, I think just saying poly is just like the quick and easy way of saying it, but in doing a little bit more research specifically for this episode, um, an open relationship is more accurate to what Mason and I have. So in an open relationship, two people generally are committed to each other but have options to explore sexually outside of their relationship. So that is exactly what Mason and I have. And also I just want to say that since this involves Mason, I'm not going to get into details about like our relationship. I'll of course share some of my experiences but like I'm not going to talk about the dates that I go on. I'm not going to talk about you know, the dates that he goes on. Like, I'm not gonna do that because because while I do share a lot with y'all, there are some things where I'm just like, that's just gonna be between us. So if you're looking for the tea on our, on our like dates outside of each other, that's not gonna happen here. So Mason and I are in an open relationship. We are committed to each other and our relationship isn't open to other committed relationships. So I'm not going on dates trying to find a girlfriend to also have and also have my boyfriend. That, in my experience, is more polyamory. So polyamory is when you have committed relationships to more than one partner. So if I was going out trying to find another, uh, trying to find a girlfriend or another boyfriend or a non-binary pal to have a committed, another committed relationship to, that would be polyamory. But again, it's, it's so hard to kind of like nail all of this down 
because it's it just depends on your personal definition you know like trying to pin down all these definitions is kind of like trying to pin down the difference between like bisexual and pansexual like there are different working definitions but they're so similar and they're kind of all in the same world that it's like kind of hard to nail down. Polyamory, again, is multiple partners in general. Also, don't, please don't take my definitions as gospel because that is the last thing that they are. I actually found a pretty helpful little article, I think on BetterHelp's website. So I will have that linked down below. I'll also have the book, The Ethical Slut listed down below that is basically like a, a very very well-renowned book when it comes to um, open relationships and non-monogamy but if we keep going down definitions then there's like swingers that are very you know i feel like everybody has heard about swingers like swinger share partners and swap partners and then uh, there's like monogamish so it's kind of like hetero flexible, right? It's like this weird term. It's like the bi-curious of the non-monogamy term world where you are generally monogamous, but there are instances and situations in which your partnership allows you to be not monogamous. So this would be something like, say you're a bisexual woman who's never had sex with another woman um, and your boyfriend lets you sleep with a woman or you know, you're know you on vacation and you give your boyfriend a hall pass, like what whatever it is. The hard thing when talking about this topic is everything with non-monogamy is 125% communication and how you and your partner or partners define your relationship, what you're comfortable with, what you're not comfortable with, and you know, what you're trying to get out of it. It's a very self-identifying process because every situation is a little bit different. No two situations are going to be like. Do I have a foundation? I'm pretty, like my self-tan, Y'all, I use the same self tan every time, but I feel like it turned out so dark this time. Like I am fucking tan. Um, this is loving tan and dark, by the way. Which again, I I don't know what happened this time, but my tan turned out dark. I wanna kinda talk about how I got into it and how Mason and I talked about being not monogamous because I think it's still such like a taboo kind of thing to talk about, which I think is is lifting. Oh, also, I feel like another example of like monogamish couples would be like couples that are like finding unicorns, right? Y'all are together, but on these certain instances, you can invite other people sexually into your bedroom. Maybe that's swingers too. I no no, because swingers like swap. Y'all just keep in mind that like I'm learning just as much as y'all are when doing these sexy Sundays. That's why I would like to film them because I just feel like it opens up the dialogue for both of us. So I am a person that has always been a flirt. Always. I love attention. Who knew? Um and I have just always liked attention. I've liked to flirt. I love those times on dates where you get like the sexual tension and like the newness of it. I love that shit as I'm sure a lot of us do. And Mason was the same way. And so of course, like I had told him through the time, of course, like dating him, I had told him that, you know, I had recently come out as bisexual, but I've never had like any dating experience with a woman. And that was something that was really important to me to have. Obviously like I came out as at 24, that's a little bit of a late bloomer. I feel like I'm definitely not alone in that because I know uh, a lot of people are in the same boat as me. That was something that was really important to me. And I remember, I remember when I was like 21, 22, going out to bars, me and my best friend would go to gay bars. I would always play wing woman for her and I just remember like feeling like I was missing out because I was just like, I just like, I want to dance with women, I want to kiss women, like I want to have these like fun, crazy bar experiences with women, you know? Like I just felt like I was missing out and it, it bummed me out and of course like I wasn't really versed in polyamory and my boyfriend was like, he probably would have been okay if I like made out with a girl, but like, you know, that's, that's kind of it. It was really important to me to have those experiences like any other queer woman. And so in talking 
to Mason, you know, he really, he really drove home. I love you and I can't give you what you want to be happy. So instead of, you know, making a big fuss about it, breaking up over it, or just like depriving you of that, like, why wouldn't I just give you that? Which like, that really changed my perspective. It, it just like was really eye-opening to just not see your partner like as a possession, you know, like that switch from possession to partnership. Like now I get to see my partner be so happy and I still get my partner and, and it brings us like closer in a way. I don't know, maybe I'm getting ahead of myself here, but that was really like when he explained it like that, I was like, that makes perfect sense to me. Being non-monogamous was something that we had talked about. Mason and I have been together for three years next week. Being polyamorous, being opening our relationship up, however, whatever you want to call it, which like I'm not super picky with how we call it, but I guess if we're calling it correctly, oh, it's our open relationship because we're committed to each other, but we're open to others with rules. So we had talked about that a couple of years ago, like within the first year of us dating, and then we had talked about it again. And then when COVID hit and we were separated from each other for going on a year and a half now, uh, about halfway through, you know, not being able to see each other is when we decided to open our relationship up, which obviously like dating during a pandemic is almost impossible like i didn't really start like seeing people up until the last like four months um because obviously last fall like cases of covid were skyrocketing i was really paranoid nobody was vaccinated yet like i just wasn't really comfortable just like going out on the town or anything like that like or even really like seeing people that i wasn't already in contact with i was I'm really COVID cautious. So I just like wasn't super comfortable doing that. So again, it's really only been the last like four to six months that we decided to go for it. And it has been so much fun. So the first thing when you want to open your relationship up is you got to define what you want to do, what you want to get out of it. I'm not going to go into like Mason's side of it, but like for me, I wanted to go on dates with women. I wanted to go on dates with women. I wanted to hook up with women. I wanted to meet more like, I wanted to like meet more queer women and I wanted to explore my sexuality in that way. But neither of us wanted to bring in another woman into our relationship. So separate from our relationship, we can basically have, like I can have friends with benefits with a woman. You know, it's not until I like sat back and looked at this. I was trying to go very like fun, glittery Gen Z, but this is looking very 80s, which I'm not mad about either. So the first thing you need to do is figure out what your definition is. Are you guys going to be, are y'all gonna be poly? Are you gonna have an open relationship? Are you gonna be monogamish? Like what's gonna happen? And also keep in mind that just like anything, the rules you set out at first may not be the rules you end on. Especially if you are new to non-monogamy, you may try something and realize that it's not for you or you may want to try something and it ends up working out. So just keep in mind that like you are going to want, like you all, all ethical non-monogamy is, is communication. If you don't already have your communication skills on point, I'm just gonna say it, don't try an open relationship. I just don't, personally, I don't think it will be successful if you can't properly communicate with each other. If you, if you can't work through a fight or a disagreement in a productive and healthy way, don't try ethical non-monogamy. You're not ready for it. Because again, it is 100% communication. So you're gonna have to define it you're gonna have to figure out what you're curious about and you just have to be open and honest with your partner and be very upfront. This blush, oh, this is the CoverGirl blush in Soft Mink. This has been my favorite since like high school. It's so pretty, I love it. You're going to have to communicate and you're going to have to set clear guidelines. Basically hard limits and soft limits. If you're not familiar with the, those terms, those are like BDSM terms. So hard limits are things that are just like, no, I'm not comfortable with this. I don't wanna try this. Um, no, 
Um, and soft limits are, I would be willing to talk about that. I would maybe be willing, but let's, let's, it's soft, right? So it's, it's a soft limit. We can maybe work with that limit. Hard limits are like, no, but also like when we first started, we had all of these rules that like, we don't follow now because those are all rules that we made up when we were still trying to figure everything out. And now that we are actively practicing non-monogamy, it just it is unrealistic. So one of our rules was that if one of us didn't have someone to talk to, the other person wouldn't either. But like, it's hard to find people to talk to. So in practice, that was just a completely unrealistic expectation because at the end of the day, Mason and I are happy for each other when the other one finds someone that they're excited to talk to. So we're not going to, we're not going to limit that. Now it would be different if I was like, hey, I don't want to talk to women anymore. And then I can make that conversation of, hey, I'm not talking to women anymore and I'm not comfortable with you talking to people outside of our relationship either. But that's the thing is it's again, just communication and it's trial and error to figure out what works exactly for you and your relationship. And it's fluid, it is so fluid. Just like any relationship, it is so fluid. It's rapidly changing and you have to make sure that you are hearing the other person out and actively making sure things are okay. You have to check in with each other. You know, now the more than more that I'm talking about this, the more it's sounding like I'm also talking about BDSM, which I want to do that might be one of the next videos. I wanna do a video about toys. I know I've been talking about doing a video with toys, but I have one of my best friends works at a sex shop. So I want to bring her on as like a guest. So it may not happen for a little bit cause we have to like make our schedules align. So don't worry, the video about toys is coming, but you know, I'm just trying to figure it all out. But just like BDSM, like you have to try stuff to figure out if you like it. And then you have to communicate to make sure the other person is okay and keep going from there. I also think it's really important to talk about jealousy and any icky feelings. And this is, I want to start by just talking about like in my experience, like in your, in your committed relationship, it takes trial and error. Like I said, I was very new to this. So when we first started, I would like overshare or something like that. And it would make Mason uncomfortable. And it wasn't the end of the world. It was just a, hey, um, I don't wanna hear about this. I'm really excited for you, but I don't wanna hear about this. I'm willing to hear about this. So again, all it is is 100% communication and like being open to making mistakes. Obviously, like when you're opening up your relationship, it's really, really scary because it can feel like you're cheating. It can feel not good because society has told us that anything outside of your immediate committed, committed relationship is not good, it's cheating, you know, stuff like that. And then also, if you're a person like me and have had experience with not having the healthiest relationship, my brain goes, oh my God, if I mess this up once, he's gonna tell me I cheated on him and he's gonna like leave me and all of this stuff, which obviously that's like a fear, but that is not the case. When I have messed up, we talk about it and we re-explain our boundaries and what we are comfortable with and what we are not comfortable with and we move on from there. Now I haven't like messed up, messed up because I also wanna talk about you can still cheat in an open relationship. You can still cheat in a polyamorous relationship. You can still cheat and people do and use it as an excuse, but that's not okay. It takes so much trust and communication and the second that you break one of those rules that is that that is cheating so like one of my rules for my relationship is i can sleep with women if i were to go sleep with a man i would be cheating on mason because that is a break of our trust of our commitment to each other and our rules cheating just turns from just having sex with somebody else to breaking the rules of having sex with somebody else does that make sense? Okay, my camera's overheating. I'm gonna go fill in my eyebrows really quick. Okay, brows are on. Let's keep going. So yeah, that is one of the biggest like myths or like things that people think that are just like not true. You can absolutely still cheat while having an open relationship. The definition of cheating is just different. It's just different. I think I'm gonna do like little 
like little stars. Little Oh my god, this is so cute. But I wanted to talk, I was talking about like icky feelings because that is just something that like, if it's, it, how do I phrase this? Like there are still going to be icky feelings, especially if you are used to monogamy, there are still going to be some icky feelings left. Like after I go on a date with a girl, there are still feelings of guilt left because my brain, you just have to train your brain that like, no, this is okay. This is okay. This is okay. I trust Mason that he trusts me. I didn't do anything wrong. I stayed within our bounds. I did nothing wrong. But like, for example, having feelings of like guilt when you are new to non-monogamy is going to be, it's, they're going to be there because it's just not something that you are used to. So your brain is going to think that you're doing something, something shady when like that's, that's really not the case but you really have to be very self-aware and go, okay, like, like the guilt that I feel, like I just explained, is very minimal and it is something that I know I can work through. It's just gonna take time. So if, you know, you're someone that is relatively new to trying this and you're feeling a lot of feelings of guilt and maybe it's a little bit harder for you to get past, maybe, maybe being non-monogamous is not for you. Or maybe it's just gonna take time, but it really does take a lot of being very self-aware and really having those conversations with your partner. Oh my God, this is so pretty. Wow. Oh my God, that's so fun. And same with feelings of jealousy. Like I still get a little bit jealous, especially like, obviously it's hard because like, I'm just jealous that the people that Mason gets to see get to go on dates with him because obviously I physically cannot. So like there are still normal feelings of jealousy or envy. Hi editing Katie. I also want, just want to say because I've gotten a lot of questions about feelings of jealousy. Feelings of jealousy, everything I'm saying pertains to jealousy as well. So if it is something that you're feeling very minimally or you know you're new to it and you're feeling jealous, um, be self-aware. If it is something that is weighing on you a lot, bring it up to your partner and see if maybe there is room to readjust. So whether it's just, I feel jealous when I hear about this part, but I'm fine with hearing everything else, maybe just talk to your partner. Or if it's, you know, really intense feelings of jealousy, again, that's when I feel like you need to reevaluate. But feelings of jealousy are going to be normal too. It's just something that you have to balance and you have to really check in with yourself and check in with your partner and make sure you are communicating those feelings with your partner. So I just wanted to say that about jealousy as well. Pretty much everything I'm saying about guilt also applies with jealousy. But again, it's not anything that is detrimental to me and it is something that like I know is a relatively normal feeling, so it's not that big of a deal to me. It's still going to be it's still normal for you to feel that way because that is what society has told us for years and years and years is normal, you know, like going on a date with somebody outside of your committed partner is not normal. So when you do it, your body's gonna go, this isn't normal, and you go, okay, but it is for us. I have no idea what lipstick I'm gonna wear. I'm probably gonna wear the same lip gloss because I love it. But I also, like, you know, we're coming, we're coming to a close with this video, and I also wanna talk about how rewarding it can be. Like, I feel like not very many people talk about it, but it is so rewarding and it is so much fun. One, I feel more fulfilled. I feel more fulfilled as a bisexual woman. I feel happy and I'm having fun. And it genuinely, in my opinion, brings Mason and I closer in a way that I would have never expected. Like your partner should be your best friend, one of your best friends. You should obviously have other best friends besides your partner, but this brings our friendship to a new level. And the first, you know, two and a half years of our relationship, we're building up that friendship to this level. And now we've just like surpassed it in just an incredible way. But like, I get so excited to hear about his dates and he gets so excited 
for me. Like on the dates that are going really well and I get to text him and be like, hey, I'm on a date. It's going really well. Like probably won't talk to you until tomorrow. And he just gets so excited for me. Or when I get to hear about how his date like roasted the fuck out of him. Like it's just, it's so much fun. And I would have, I would have never expected to feel this way ever. I'm gonna set my face real quick. So that was obviously like really surprising for me because I just, I never expected it. But it is just, it's so much fun and it's so cool to me because I, I never thought I would get to do this. I never thought that I would get to go out and be able to dance with women and kiss women and bring women home and like do all of this while also having my partner. And my partner is supportive of this. Also, this should go without saying, but all of these rules with communication apply to every single person in your situation, no matter what it is. If you're having a full on polyamorous relationship, you have to make sure that communication is clear with every single person or even just like, even just being like monogamish. If you're bringing, if you're sleeping with somebody, that person still has feelings. That person is not just your sex toy. Like you have to communicate with every single person in the relationship. So anybody that I talk to, anybody that Mason talks to, if you, if anybody finds my dating apps on every single one of them, it says in, a, in an ethically non-monogamous relationship, just looking for friends with benefits. And I continue to communicate with whoever I am seeing about like, hey, if you ever feel like you aren't getting what you need, you just let me know and we can end this. We can whatever we, whatever we need to do. So I just wanted to throw that in there too, because like, I feel like polyamory, non-monogamy has a bad rep for so many of these reasons where like people just think that people in non-monogamous relationships are just like slutty and shady and like, Maybe some of us are slutty, but we aren't shady. Not all of us are shady, okay? And that's the biggest piece of it is not being shady and being open and honest. It's really, it's not that hard. It's not that hard to just communicate with somebody and it's worth it because you communicating with the person, even if it hurts their feelings like a little bit, it's going to be so much worse if you don't nip it in the bud and redirect it immediately. Anyways, that's my random tangent. I am going to put on some fake eyelashes. I think I'm gonna, I can't decide if I wanna do like big lashes or if I wanna do like some little wispy situations. I might do like these, Kiss and Chiffon. Those look fun, maybe I'll do those. So yeah, I'm gonna go put these on and then I will be right back. Okay, I just adjusted my ponytail so that way it looks a little bit cuter and popped on some eyelashes and, and this look is done. Ooh, this is so much fun. I really, really love it. But yeah, I'm really glad that I got to talk about this. And again, this was, there is so much more to say about open relationships, polyamory, things like that. So if y'all have any questions or have any specific topics under the, this umbrella that you would like me to deep dive further into, I also like, once the borders open, once I'm closer to Mason, I would love to have Mason on for an episode of Sexy Sunday so that we can talk about it and get his perspective because he has more experience with it than I do. I just have my experience from the last year. But I hope you all found this helpful, interesting, whatever. If you guys have any questions, please comment down below. Please let me know what topic I should talk about next. Do y'all want to hear about BDSM? What do you want to hear about it specifically? What questions do you have? Let me know. But that's it. That was Sexy Sunday. Thank you all so, so, so much for watching. Please make sure to give this video a like and subscribe so you don't miss more. I genuinely put up Sexy Sunday the first Sunday of every month. Uh, we had a heat wave last week and my best friend visited from out of town last week so I didn't get a chance to film for Sexy Sunday. So you got it the second Sunday of the month. But once a month, I put up a Sexy Sunday. So please make sure to subscribe so you don't miss it next month. And I love you. I hope you all stay in happy, healthy, and cool out there. And I will see you all in my next video. Bye!